It's time to check in with one another. Let's get into it for the week beginning March 23rd, 2020. Everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls, and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning March 23rd, 2020. Now, I know last week was a little heavy. I got that. Uh, some of you might not have understood what we were trying to get at here. Okay, I also understand that. But this week's message really feels like it's time to check in with one another. And I'm talking about mentally and emotionally checking in with one another. Now I want to provide a little example to you. I, this just happened a couple of weeks ago. I saw somebody who was very quiet about their pain, but you could tell that they were in pain. If you're an empath, you can sense when someone's in pain. And then there was this other person who's also had things happen in their life, but they're much more vocal about it. And this person was, uh, beyond crying out for help, the sense that I got from this other person is that, you know, they've they've had their thing, they asked for help, they got it, and then maybe they kind of got addicted to that feeling of someone taking care of them. Again, I, I this is just who I am. I'm an empath. I can pick up this stuff. I know that sounds weird, okay? Do not as I do. You're not supposed to touch your face right now, okay? But I have the face tingles and it happens when I do readings. <laughs> so I'm in my house. I wash my hands, okay? Um but this person, I just got the sense that this person was a little bit of an energetic vampire, uh, kind of now going into and just really rehashing things to pull attention and energy towards them. Um, and it was really sad to me that this other person who clearly was still back in that darker place was getting overshadowed and everybody fed into this other person because the person's like, I just, why is my face so tingling? My goodness, why is my life like this? I just don't understand and blah, blah, blah. And everybody just went right in, oh, you know, and they're coddling this person and overlooking the person who probably really was in trouble. We see this a lot with any kind of career where it's kind of a traumatizing career. That would be you, military people. That would be you, police officers, first responders, firemen, EMTs, any kind of first responder, nurses, doctors, especially ER doctors and nurses. Even if you're not a doctor or a nurse, is the term orderly? I don't know if that's the right term still, but even if you're in the hospital, whatever your capacity is, you're still dealing with people in the most troubled moment of their life. <laughs> even if it's joyful, even if they're going into labor. There's a little trouble I hear with the labor, like, oh, it hurts, you know, and then <laughs> and you get a nice, beautiful baby, but like, oof, you gotta go, you gotta like work for it, right? So if you have those kinds of careers, it might not be put out there as like a, a priority for you to be looked after. And then people can't believe it when someone snaps. I've been, you know, I live in Colorado Springs. I'm around people who are in the Army, Air Force. And I know that you guys get trained to think that you have to take on the pressures of the world, right? That you have to protect us. And, you know, I know you sign up for that. And it's not just military people. It's anybody, who, again, who's a first responder. Um, but you need to make sure that your mental health is cared for as well. I don't care what the military tells you, okay? <laughs> You're a human being first. No matter what, you are a human being first. So this, this message of we need to look after one another, this has to do with coming into the heart space. We've been talking about this for a good long while and expanding that heart space and coming into more of that awareness. There's the big A word. It's not awakening. <laughs> At least not right now. It's, it's awareness. Yes. So when someone says, I'm fine. And you know they're not. Or they're just always used to people not taking them seriously. Or they think that, you know, there's, maybe there's some stigma. Whether it's in their family or in their profession. About them getting help. You know, you don't have to push it. I don't know that that's the right thing to do necessarily, but you can just say, well, you know, you want to go for a walk and just see what comes out or, um, okay, well, do we need to go have some fun this weekend? Uh, you know, last week we were talking about and 
I don't think I mentioned this last week, but you know, one of the things that's kept me in high spirits, watching Rhett and Link. <laughs> like I've been listening to Ear Biscuits, which so insightful guys, not that they're watching this, but it's so insightful. And I love listening to that. And of course, uh, good mythical morning. Again, do not touch your face. Do not touch your face. Do not as I do. Michelle's being a hypocrite. I know, but my face is tingly. I don't know why. Ooh. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've been watching them. I find them so funny. And yeah, you whether you like them or don't, I feel like they're the best friends everybody wishes they had. I would love to have some like cool guys who are funny and do really crazy stuff. I mean, I wouldn't participate, but it makes me laugh. So laughter is important here. Yes. So if you find somebody who maybe you yourself, you need some support or what have you, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to somebody. It doesn't have to be a huge confessional if that's not what feels right for you. Or if a huge confessional type thing might be better suited to be done with the support of a mental health care practitioner, um, a spiritual uh, practitioner, somebody that you trust, okay, to give you that kind of support. But don't be afraid to do that. Or if you feel like you're on your own, sometimes we walk a solitary path and it's because we have to be very focused. So don't be down on yourself because society's like, what's the matter with you? You just spend so much time. La, 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 la. We don't care about what they say. <laughs> All right? You take care of you, but you can still, you know, connect with nature. You can still meditate. You can still take care of yourself in that way. But we need to get smarter. And smarter doesn't come from here. It comes from the heart. That means if someone is finally opening up and they're talking, you don't look at them and go, you're just complaining. The mind doesn't know much more than like, you know, black or white duality consciousness, right? So either you're complaining or you need to be saved. Like, ugh. but when you're tapped into your heart, you start to feel, oh, this person actually is just complaining. This person is just trying to get people to feel sorry for them. This person is swimming in victimhood or being a martyr. Right? You'll start to get a sense from your heart, which then activates your whole awareness in every cell of your body. It starts opening all that up. And now you can discern, okay, this, this I'm just going to step back from this person. This person might need, I don't know, whatever you feel instinctively would be the right thing for that person. Okay, does that make sense? That's how we need to look out for one another. It's not going to come from here. It's coming from here. And this is an important message for a lot of my audience out there who have been with me, thank you so much, <laughs> for a very long time. Or if you're new here and you're just starting to understand all of this, it's all good. Thank you for being here. I love each and every one of you. Uh, but I've seen a lot of my audience who, you know, a lot of you are empaths, get sucked in by someone who's being toxic, posing as spiritual. That'll be less likely to happen when you come out of the brain a little bit and come into the heart. I know. I've, I've had to learn that lesson the hard way. I still, even recently, <laughs> you know, people will pull on my heartstrings and all I want to do is go in there and help and I want everyone to feel good and I want everyone uh, to realize their potential and, you know, I want connection. There's nothing more precious as a human being than real heart-to-heart, soul-level connection. And it doesn't have to be romantic. It doesn't have to have some past life story around it. It doesn't have to be fancy, <laughs> okay? We can uh, discover different aspects of ourselves by connecting with other people. Uh, again, I did say that there are times where we have to walk a solitary path maybe for some people, but you know, you still have your connection in one way or another. And the way to that is by having the real understanding, not just this, but a real understanding of, uh, you know, of what people are actually experiencing and what they're going through. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, I'm not going to make this a 40 minute video. <laughs> I promise. Let me just get my cards and let's see what's going on here for this week. Yeah. And you may need to check in on someone who is elderly this week. I mean, always be on the lookout for that. Um, and this feels very much about like mental and emotional turmoil for people just be checking on one another and don't let it be a one, you know, one-sided thing. If you have somebody who's, you know, and I know people like this, they're always, uh, they're always a victim. People accuse me of that. 
the long, a long time ago, people would accuse me of that. And the thing was, is that they didn't, this is why we have to come out of here and come into the heart. That way we can know when someone's just playing the victim and trying to play on our compassion and when someone really needs help. Um, in the time when I finally started breaking open and talking to people, I was coming from a very traumatized past that I had kept hidden for, the, for decades for decades and then it finally started to crack and it started to come out a little bit and I needed help and I didn't know where to turn. That's why I can speak on these topics, guys. I've lived it. Um, I'm not just coming here trying to be sunshine and rainbows. You guys know that, right? <laughs> I want everyone to be in the real light, the real rainbow light, not not some image of it, some made up image of it. Um, but yeah, and people would accuse me of being, you know, oh my God, all you do is complain. No, I'm in pain. And I need help. And I don't know how to ask for it. Right? So there's the difference there. Nobody helped me, by the way. I ended up having to... I'm martyring myself, I know. <laughs> but I did. I, you know, It was just part of my path. I had to discover my way around. And then I did eventually come across some people who understood. But And I got the help that I wanted and needed. But, you know, it, it's tricky. If you guys don't know what I'm doing over here. I got this corded mic. Up here is weird. Down here I have to do like this. <laughs> so I'm going to be bumping the camera. So anyway... Be more discerning. Oh, shoot. I just dropped a bunch of cards. Hangs hard. So I, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Um, communication, too. Communication is very important. And that means I get this all the time. When somebody wants a personal reading with me, they'll be very cryptic in what they're saying. Now, I that it was, stop with that. Please don't be cryptic. You know, you're expecting someone to be a mind reader. Here's the thing with uh, any kind of reading. If you want a clear answer, you have to be clear in your question. If you're just kind of fuzzy about it, you're going to provide a fuzzy energy and you're probably not going to be able to receive, right? You can't focus the question. So communicate what you're honestly feeling. Not what, you know, I don't know what people are doing when they're doing that. Like trying to test if somebody can read their mind. I don't know. Anyway, first card out is school site peace. Let this be your guide, okay? If you feel the peace, that's what's going to get us to a happier place here, guys, okay? Nothing else is going to do. If you just want to be right, if you just want attention, you know, those sort of things, you're taking away from people who actually need the help. I know this gets tricky and I know this gets sticky because everybody experiences pain and so it can be really hard to go, well, this person deserves my attention more than this person. It's not about that. Your, your heart and your love is, is unlimited, okay? But we need to discern who needs to figure things out for themselves and who really is hanging on by a thread and maybe could use a little bit of help, okay? A little bit of guidance. Next card we have is Labradorite, take action. So this is take action towards that peace, which is discovering your own sense of peace, your own sense of self, taking care of that mental body. Guys, you're going to be seeing so many examples of how we have neglected our mental body. And people think that if you just go sliding right into spirituality, everything's going to be fine. <laughs> you're a whole and complete being and you have those lessons to learn as well. So take action, use your intuition. That's what Labradorite is all about. And be truthful with yourself. So if you have, you know, some trauma healing to do for you, get in there and do it. it you'll know, like if you're somebody who is very reactionary, for example, because these are the people I'm the most concerned about right now. Because one, they're doing the most harm in the world. Um, these people who are just angry and they just want to attack or have power struggles. Um, I have another funny example. I was... Uh, out and about. I was sitting in my car. I was trying to send a message through and it wasn't sending. And I'm in a parking lot. This guy in a big old pickup truck comes that close to my car. I don't know what it is with people trying to stress me out with my car. The parking lot was completely empty. He had to come zooming right past my car. And then he started backing up into the parking spot. Again, there was no need for him to do this. And I knew what he was doing. You know, people just love to have power struggles. They love to, because he kept watching for my reaction. He was trying to upset me, literally was trying to upset me. And he gets out of the truck. He's still looking at me, still looking at me, still looking at me. <laughs> I'm like, what is this dude doing? Like, you're annoying. Get away from me. But you could tell he had, he had something to prove, right? Later on, 
we were at this place, right? We get out of the car, go on in. And we're walking around. I see this guy again. And he has a little baby girl on his back. He's like walking around with her. And he looked at me and he kind of gave me a dirty look. And I ignored him. And I looked right at that beautiful baby. And I was like, hi, sweetheart. He goes, did she wave at you? And now the father part of him kicked in. And now he's gentle, peaceful. When it comes to his little baby girl, like all is well right? So this is kind of what I'm talking about here. This is, I think we can all experience something like this where just kind of in our day-to-day lives, we're always trying to have power over other people when, you know, this, this beautiful little baby girl really inspired something in this man. And you could tell that, you know, it's a long story, but you could just tell like she is his life force, which puts a little pressure on the baby, I think, but (laughs) you know, that we need to tap into what's important. And that sense of peace that he feels, maybe, I don't know him, but you know, his sense of peace that he feels maybe when he is talking about his little girl, if he could just connect into that all the time and enjoy life across the board and not feel that need to, you know, have power struggles or whatever, You know, like this would be a good place to live, wouldn't it? This would be a great world to live in. But people don't do that. I've seen, I was on a, you know, country road up in the mountains. Uh, Country road. That's what I would call it in Ohio. I don't know what they call it out here in Colorado, but (laughs) a mountain road, I guess. Uh, And there were these two guys who were trying to literally run me off the road. I've told this story before. Um, The fact that any of us survived that is an absolute miracle. Um, but you know, what, what is going on with them mentally to even want to do that to another human being, to terrorize a woman who's by herself in a car. I did nothing to these two. I was just driving along and they came flying up behind me and then started tailgating me. And they were so close that I could see the details of their, they were probably very close to hitting my car, but I could see the details of their face and I couldn't see the license plate. So that's the kind of thing that I'm saying I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about where that mental state comes from. What what fuels that, right? So we have amethyst meditation. Now, amethyst is good for a lot of things. And this is a very healing crystal. Uh, It's good for travel, by the way, as well. But meditation, and I think this is the same. Meditation will provide the answers. Meditation will help us to connect into our truest selves. To help us uncover what still needs a little a little healing, okay? When we say check in with one another, again, it gets tricky because I don't want everybody, you know, trying to heal the maniacs, you know, that I I can't even get into that. But when I moved to Colorado Springs, if you guys have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, I was terrorized when I moved here. And I don't, I I don't, I I even thought it was like, okay, I have an out-of-state license plate still on my car. Maybe that's it. (laughs) Didn't stop after I got the Colorado license plate. There was something going on here. There's a pain that is starting to express by people wanting to start things with one another. And I don't get it. You ever have one of those real smooth days where everybody's just smiling and being present for one another? It's a good time. Why the heck aren't we doing that more? (laughs) Because we need to forgive. So here's pink tourmaline forgiveness. And maybe this is where a lot of the anger is coming from. So people just kind of don't know where to head from here. What it is, we're hitting a breaking point here, guys. And we need to start letting um, ourselves release uh, a pain frequency just so we can be recovered. You know what I mean? So do what you can. This is higher heart chakra. I always think of pink tourmaline as being the higher heart working with Archangel Shamuel. So in forgiveness, in letting, you know, giving some room and space for yourself to heal, you can start to realize your highest and fullest potential. Okay. So there's that. Hold on. (laughs) Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Let's get a color card. P.S. It is springtime. One of my, I love the in-between season, so I love fall and I love spring. There's our card. You get to see it before I do. And we'll, we'll read this one, whatever this one is too. Boom. What are you? <gasps> Pearl, connect to the divine. I, that was really dramatic. <laughs> Pearl, connect to the divine. The number is 25, which reduces to seven. So again, this whole week is just about, you know, we're figuring ourselves out. We're figuring out a way to heal ourselves, to be a healing force for other people as well. But connecting into the divine will help us do that. And then at the bottom here, we have Cherry, live an extraordinary life. The number is nine. Be done with the power struggles, guys. You know, a lot of you will or probably have noticed that 
I'm very much the, the truth speaker. <laughs> like I don't, you know, and, and people want to drag me into that category of, oh, you're just always trying to cause problems. And it's because we don't know how to live an extraordinary life. We don't know how to handle truth. We don't know how to just look at it and go, okay, let's address this, be done with it and open up to something greater. Let's make space. Let's make room. That's what we're talking about here with the nine completion, be done with it. This is a God number. Okay. What do you want? What do you want for your life? Hang on a second. I got to put this little thing down. I usually have another table sitting next to me, but I put stuff on it. <laughs> so it's over there. I got to reach down for this one. This other table I brought over. So anyway, here we are. In order to live an extraordinary life, we have to start being more compassionate. Even when someone's messing with us. I mean, I you know, always say set boundaries. Don't let people mess with you uh, and try to keep yourself as safe as possible. But be done with seeing others as the enemy. And let's start seeing through that. Whatever, even those people that were trying to run me off of a mountain road, um, what must they have endured as a child? What must they be enduring now in their lives for them? They were clearly drunk. I mean, they had to be drunk. When people, let's go down that road for a second. So when people, for example, say, oh, that person has a drinking problem and they say it with disdain, I'm sad because like the, the drinking problem comes from something, right? So again, that doesn't excuse the behavior when someone is drunk, like in this case that I'm saying about these guys about trying to run me off the road, but it, may, it does make me wonder. And we have to start paying attention to those things and asking those deeper questions, all right? And that's gonna help us clear away and start living the lives that we were always meant to live. All right, so we're gonna leave it there, guys. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. because it was like half the deck. Uh, those aren't our cards, but we'll get to it. Okay. <laughs> How's my mic? Everything's good.